Hello, and welcome to today's science lesson. And we're going to continue our work on materials and their properties. And we are going to focus on one particular property um, in the main part. And we're going to think about water resistance being a material we look at. So can we investigate water resistance? Now, there's a few things we need to think about when we are thinking about this lesson and a few things that we're going to go through as we think about how we might be able to test water resistance. The first thing is we need to know what water resistance means. What do we count as water resistance and what's the definition of it? We also need to understand why it's used, uh, why different materials are used for different jobs. So for example, we might choose a, mater a material because it's strong. Um, and what we might use that for. We might choose a material because it is water resistance, water resistant, because that's what we're looking for. And thirdly, we're going to think of a way that we might be able to investigate materials to find out whether they are water resistant or not. And this is important because when we become, become when we come to design or use the information we find out from this style of science, we need to show a way in which we can show why we've chosen that material and what it does for us. So what properties are good. So a quick recap. In this picture, you'll see there is lots of different types of materials. What I want you to do is take a moment now and just see what different materials you can spot. Pause now and have a go. Okay, so what materials did you spot? We've got a few as we go through. So the first one we've got is plastic over here. Um, and that's the blue plastic over here. I'm not entirely sure what this is used for as we can only see part of it, but we can tell by the look of it in this plastic. The next one we've got is chipboard, which is this material here. And what it is, is a wood based product. Uh, it's wood that's been mulched down, so broken down to small pieces and then compressed back together again in order to form what's called chipboard. And this allows you to uh, change the property slightly of the wood itself. Next one we've got is steel or some sort of metal, some sort of alloy of steel that is made for these paint tins. They need to be strong because they need to be able to hold their shape when they're stored. They need to protect what's inside of it so they can't rust or that sort of thing. So it's important uh, that they're protected and that's why they've chosen steel in this case. We've got more plastic, the plastic of this paint tray that's here and this handle here both of which are for painting. So we've got the rollers plastic handle. You might note that the rest of the handle here is uh, metal. So can be made out of different things, but we've got plastic chosen there. Then our next one is clay bricks. And that's all of the bricks, obviously. And they are made out of clay originally then fired in a kiln or a furnace until they are very, very hard, at which point they can be used as bricks to build houses. We've got wood and two different types of wood here. We've got wood for flooring, which is flat um, and built so they can join together nicely um, with a tongue and groove socket. So this bit sits in here, which means that they sit closely together. Or we've got building material wood which is used down here. The next thing you can see in the at uh, the back there is a wheelbarrow. Now it could be aluminium, it could be another light uh, metal. The reason you want it to be light, you want it to be strong to hold its shape, but you also want it to be light so that it's not adding lots of weight to what you're trying to lift. And then finally we have cement, which is actually inside the paper bags at the back here. Um, and cement obviously is a mixture um, a man-made mixture of different materials. So you might be able to see a few others as well. Well done if you did spot any others. So lots of materials 
uh, lots of different materials have the property of keeping water out. Uh, and here's a few examples. Now, what it actually means is when we say something, a material is water resistant or non-porous, that's that ability to keep water out. If something is porous, it does let water through. So you've got non-porous and porous being the ability to hold water out or keep water in. We also call non-porous materials water resistant materials. Now, in the images here, what material is being used to keep water out? We've got the tiles on a roof, the body of the canoe, the body of the car, and the raincoat and wellies. What material is being used? Pause now and have a go. So, England, as we know, is way too rainy at times, just consistent rain. And in order to keep that rain off, we've created an umbrella. And we've chosen the materials that we've made that umbrella out of quite particularly in order to do the job. And they've been chosen because it needs to be able to hold its form, it needs to be able to be flexible, and it needs to be able to keep water out. So here it is, and we've got two parts to an umbrella. We have what's called the canopy, which is this bit here, and it's all of that. And then you have the handle, which is this bit here, which is made out of different materials as well. Now, what we're mostly interested in is the canopy. So the canopy is usually made out of a fabric called nylon taffeta, and it's got a special coating over the top, which is made of scotch guard to make it water resistant. And it's made of these two materials because they have, or made of a coating and a material, because the material has the properties you want, the coating gives it an additional property. The properties we want is that we want it to be flexible, we want it to be strong uh, in order to hold its shape. And then we've put the scotch guard over the top of it to make it water resistant, add that additional property on top. But if you thought for a second and didn't have that material, which probably you don't unless you have uh, an umbrella in your house, what else could we make an umbrella out of? What type of material could we use? What sort of properties would you want that material to have? So the material you choose for a property needs to have certain properties and what would they be? Have a think. Pause now. What material, what properties might we want? I may have given you a hint before. Okay, and the materials are water resistance, obviously, otherwise, what's the point in the umbrella? You're just going to get wet even if you're holding it over your head. Flexible, it needs to be able to bend over the frame. And also a really nice thing about most umbrellas is that it can be put up and down and therefore need to be flexible over the top of this frame. Then you've got strong. And they need to be strong because in heavy rain and wind, it needs to be able to stay in one piece and in one place. If a tear forms in it, then obviously the water is going to come through the tear. And again, the umbrella is entirely useless because you're still going to get wet. And then it doesn't perform its job. And then finally, some umbrellas are transparent. You can hold them slightly further down, more covering over your face. You can still see up because it's transparent but you uh, don't get your face flipped. Not all umbrellas do that, but some do, just to give that extra level of protection. So your tasks, your task is you're going to test different materials that you can find around the house to see if they are capable of performing the job of an umbrella. Now, before you go testing lots of different materials and pouring water on things around your house, ask for permission to use a material that you're going to get wet. And secondly, do it over a sink, a bath or outside, because I'm pretty sure if you stand in the middle of your living room pouring water onto the cushion of your sofa, your parents won't be too happy with you. Uh, so please, 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 before you get me in trouble, Make sure you do it in a suitable way. So hold the material, gently pour the water over the top. Does the water go through the material? Does the water soak the material up and hold it in itself? Or does the water run off? 
the water runs off, then we know the material is water resistant, it is stopping the water from going anywhere. Materials that soak the water up are porous, they take the water in, and that normally means that water can pass through them as well when it's saturated, which means it's full, as full as it can be of water. So what you might want to do is complete a table like this in order to show your findings. So you might have your materials, so foil, newspaper, cloth, maybe food wrap like clean, clean film. And then you've got the properties you're looking for, which are water resistant, uh, whether it's flexible, whether it's strong. And finally, we've got under here transparent as well, if you wanted to test that. So these are examples, obviously, you're going to use your own ones. But how I would do it is I test one, say whether it was water resistant or flexible. Um, and in this case, foil can't be strong, so it breaks so easily. Newspaper is flexible, but probably would allow water through and might tear quite quickly. Cloth, on the other hand, might be strong and flexible, but water would go through it and you can't see through it. And then the food wrap might perform better than the majority of them, but is it strong enough to hold its form over the top of your um, frame? So then you need to make a choice. So if I had to make an umbrella out of materials around my home, I would use, and what's the material you're going to use? And give, tell me why. why. Why have you chosen that particular material? Okay. So that's all for today. We'll come back to that and talk about it later in the week. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.